Manuel Acuña Roxas, born Manuel Roxas Y. Acuña, January 1, 1892 to April 15, 1948, was the fifth president of the Philippines who served from 1946 until his death in 1948. He briefly served as the third and last president of the Commonwealth of the Philippines from May 28, 1946 to July 4, 1946, subsequently becoming the first president of the independent Third Philippine Republic after the United States ceded its sovereignty over the Philippines. Personal life Roxas was married to Trinidad de Leon Roxas at Our Lady of Remedies Church located at Barangay Sibyl, San Miguel, Bulacan in 1921. The couple had two children, Rosario Ruby, who married Vicente Roxas no relation, and Gerardo Manuel Jerry, who married Judy Araneta. His son, Jerry, became a member of the Philippine House of Representatives and a leader of Liberal Party of the Philippines. Jerry's sons, Manuel II, Mar, and Gerardo Jr., Dingoy, served as representatives from Capiz. In 2004, Mar became a senator and was also elected president of the Liberal Party. His daughter-in-law, Judy, continues to be a prominent and driving force of the Liberal Party. Lineage Roxas was a descendant of Antonio Roxas y Urita, the brother of Domingo Roxas y Urita (1782–1843), who was a progenitor of the Roxas de Ayala and Zobel de Ayala clans. Antonio Roxas y Urita, third great grandfather. Juan Roxas y Arroyo, second great grandfather. Caetano Roxas, great grandfather. Antonio Roxas II, grandfather. Gerardo Roxas, D. 1891, father. Manuel Roxas. Gerardo Manuel Roxas, Jerry. 1924 to 1982, son, Philippine senator. Manuel Roxas II, Mar. B. 1957, grandson, Philippine senator. Gerardo Roxas Jr. Dingoy, 1960-1993, grandson, Philippine congressman, prominent relatives from the line of Antonio Roxas y Urita. Felix Roxas y Arroyo, 1820, son of Antonio Roxas y Urita and father of Felix Roxas Jr. y Fernandez. He was the first Filipino qualified architect. Felix Roxas Jr. Y. Fernandez, 1864-1936, son of Felix Arroyo Roxas Sr. and grandson of Antonio Roxas Y. Urita. He was mayor of Manila from 1905 to 1917. Felipe Roxas Y. Arroyo, 1840-1899, son of Antonio Roxas Y. Urita. He was the painter who emigrated to Paris. Francisco L. Roxas y Reyes, 1851-1897, son of Juan Roxas y Arroyo and grandson of Antonio Roxas y Urita. He was a businessman and one of the 13 martyrs of Bagambayan. Monsignor Eric de Moulins Beaufort, B. 1962, great-great-grandson of Francisco L. Roxas. He is the Auxiliary Bishop of Notre Dame de Paris, Archdiocese of Paris, since 2008. Maria Margarita Moran Florendo y Roxas, born 15 September 1953, globally known as Margie Moran, Miss Universe of 1973. Prominent relatives from the line of Domingo Roxas y Urita, brother of Antonio Roxas, Margarita Roxas de Ayala y Ubaldo, 1826-1869, daughter of Domingo Roxas who married Antonio de Ayala. She was considered the first Filipino philanthropist and the greatest businessperson of her time. She was the matriarch of the Roxas de Ayala family. Jose Bonifacio Roxas y Ubaldo, 1834-1888, younger brother of Margarita Roxas de Ayala. In 1851, he would purchase the former Jesuit estate of Hacienda de San Pedro de Makati, which would become the basis of the Zobel de Ayala family wealth. Pedro Pablo Perico, 
Roxas 1847 to 1912, son of Jose Bonifacio Roxas y Ubaldo. He was a major stockholder and the first manager of the original San Miguel Brewery. Political career Roxas occupied more important positions in the Philippine government than any other Filipino had ever held before him. Starting in 1917 he was a member of the Municipal Council of Capiz. He became the youngest governor of his province and served in this capacity from 1919 to 1922. He was elected to the Philippine House of Representatives in 1922, and for 12 consecutive years was Speaker of the House. He was member of the Constitutional Convention 1934-1935, Secretary of Finance, Chairman of the National Economic Council, Chairman of the National Development Company and many other government corporations and agencies, Brigadier General in the USAFFE, recognized guerrilla leader and military leader of the Philippine Commonwealth Army. Senate after the amendments to the 1935 Philippine Constitution were approved in 1941, he was elected 1941 to the Philippine Senate, but was unable to serve until 1945 because of the outbreak of World War II. Having enrolled prior to World War II as an officer in the reserves, he was made liaison officer between the Commonwealth Government and the United States Army Forces in the Far East headquarters of General Douglas MacArthur. He accompanied President Quezon to Corregidor where he supervised the destruction of Philippine currency to prevent its capture by the Japanese. When Quezon left Corregidor, Roxas went to Mindanao to direct the resistance there. It was prior to Quezon's departure that he was made Executive Secretary and designated as successor to the presidency in case Quezon or Vice President Sergio Osmeña were captured or killed. Roxas was captured in 1942 by the Japanese invasion forces. He became chief advisor to Jose P. Laurel, but secretly sympathetic to the guerrilla movement, he passed information via Ramona Mona, Snyder to Edwin Ramsey. He was returned by the military service of the Philippine Commonwealth Army joining the troops and military officers of men was beginning the liberation against the Japanese forces. When the Congress of the Philippines was convened in 1945, the legislators elected in 1941 chose Roxas as Senate President. Presidential election of 1946 Prior to the Philippine national elections of 1946, at the height of the last Commonwealth elections, Senate President Roxas and his friends left from the Nationalista Party and formed the Liberal Party. Roxas became their candidate for president and Elpidio Quirino for vice president. The Nationalistas, on the other hand, had Osmeña for president and Senator Eulogio Rodriguez for vice president. Roxas had the staunch support of General MacArthur. Osmeña refused to campaign, saying that the Filipino people knew his reputation. On April 23, 1946, Roxas won 54% of the vote, and the Liberal Party won a majority in the legislature. Last President of the Commonwealth Roxas served as the President of the Commonwealth of the Philippines in a brief period, from May 28, 1946 to July 4, 1946 during which time Roxas helped prepare the groundwork for an independent Philippines. On May 8, 1946, prior to his inauguration, President-elect Roxas, accompanied by U.S. High Commissioner Paul V. McNutt, left for the United States. On May 28, 1946, Roxas was inaugurated as the last president of the Commonwealth of the Philippines. The inaugural ceremonies were held in the ruins of the Legislative Building, now part of the National Museum of the Philippines, and were witnessed by about 200,000 people. In his address, he outlined the main policies of his administration, mainly, closer ties with the United States, adherence to the newly created United Nations, national reconstruction, relief for the masses, social justice for the working class, the maintenance of peace and order, the preservation of individual rights and liberties of the citizenry, and honesty and efficiency of government. On June 3, 1946, Roxas appeared for the first time before a joint session of Congress to deliver his first State of the Nation address. 
Among other things, he told the members of the Congress the grave problems and difficulties the Philippines face and reported on his special trip to the United States to discuss the approval for independence. On June 21, he reappeared in front of another joint session of the Congress and urged the acceptance of two laws passed by the Congress of the United States on April 30, 1946 the Tidings McDuffie Act, a Philippine Rehabilitation Act, and the Bell Trade Act or Philippine Trade Act. Both recommendations were accepted by the Congress. First President of the Third Republic, 1946-1948 Manuel Roxas' term as the President of the Commonwealth ended on the morning of July 4, 1946, when the Third Republic of the Philippines was inaugurated and independence from the United States proclaimed. The occasion, attended by some 300,000 people, was marked by the simultaneous lowering of the stars and stripes and raising of the national flag, a 21-gun salute, and the pealing of church bells. Roxas then swore the oath of office as the first president of the new republic. The inaugural ceremonies took place at Luneta Park in the city of Manila. On the grandstand alone were around 3,000 dignitaries and guests, consisting of President Roxas, Vice President Quirino, their respective parties and the cabinet, the last High Commissioner to the Philippines and first Ambassador to the Philippines Paul McNutt, General Douglas MacArthur, coming from Tokyo, United States Postmaster General Robert E. Hannigan, a delegation from the United States Congress led by Maryland Senator Millard Tidings, author of the Tidings McDuffie Act, and Missouri Representative C. Jasper Bell, author of the Bell Trade Act, and former Civil Governor General Francis Burton Harrison. Presidency Administration and Cabinet Domestic Policies Economy No sooner had the fanfare of the independence festivities ended that the government and the people quickly put all hands to work in the tasks of rescuing the country from its dire economic straits. Reputed to be the most bombed and destroyed country in the world, the Philippines was in a sorry mess. Only Stalingrad and Warsaw, for instance, could compare with Manila in point of destruction. All over the country more than a million people were unaccounted for. The war casualties as such could very well reach the two million mark. Conservative estimates had it that the Philippines had lost about two-thirds of her material wealth. The country was facing near bankruptcy. There was no national economy, no export trade. Indeed, production for exports had not been restored. On the other hand, imports were to reach the amount of $3 million. There was need of immediate aid from the United Nations Relief and Rehabilitation Administration. Something along this line was obtained. Again, loans from the United States, as well as some increase in the national revenues, were to help the new republic. President Roxas, with bold steps, met the situation with the same confidence he exuded in his inaugural address, when he said, The system of free but guided enterprise is our system. Among the main remedies proposed was the establishment of the Philippine Rehabilitation Finance Corporation. This entity would be responsible for the construction of 12,000 houses and for the grant of easy term loans in the amount of 177 million pesos. Another proposal was the creation of the Central Bank of the Philippines to help stabilize the Philippine dollar reserves and coordinate and the nation's banking activities gearing them to the economic progress. Concentrating on the sugar industry, President Roxas would exert such efforts as to succeed in increasing production from 13,000 tons at the time of the Philippine liberation to an all-high of 1 million tons. Reconstruction after the war The post-war Philippines had burned cities and towns, ruined farms and factories, blasted roads and bridges, shattered industries and commerce, and thousands of massacred victims. The war had paralyzed the educational system, where 80% of the school buildings, their equipment, laboratories and furniture were destroyed. Numberless books, invaluable documents and works of art, irreplaceable historical relics and family heirlooms, hundreds of churches and temples were burned. The reconstruction of the damaged school buildings alone cost more than PHP 126 billion. The new republic began to function on an annual deficit of over PHP 200 million with little prospect of a balanced budget for some years to come. 
Manila and other cities then were infested with criminal gangs which used techniques of American gangsters in some activities bank holdups, kidnapping and burglaries. In rural regions, especially the provinces of central Luzon and the southern Tagalog regions, the Hukbalahaps and brigands terrorized towns and barrios. Agrarian reform in 1946, shortly after his induction to presidency, Manuel Roxas proclaimed the Rice Share Tenancy Act of 1933 effective throughout the country. However problems of land tenure continued. In fact these became worse in certain areas. Among the remedial measures enacted was Republic Act No. 1946 likewise known as the Tenant Act which provided for a 70-30 sharing arrangements and regulated share tenancy contracts. It was passed to resolve the ongoing peasant unrest in central Luzon. Amnesty Proclamation President Roxas, on January 28, 1948, granted full amnesty to all so-called Philippine collaborators, many of whom were on trial or awaiting to be tried, particularly former President Jose P. Laurel (1943–1945). The amnesty proclamation did not apply to those collaborators who were charged with the commission of common crimes such as murder rape and arson the presidential decision did much to heal a standing wound that somehow threatened to divide the people's sentiments it was a much called for measure to bring about a closer unity in the trying times when such was most needed for the progress of the nation hux outlawed Disgusted with the crimes being committed by Hukbo ng Bayan Laban Sa Hapon, Nation's Army Against the Japanese, also called the Hux, and possessing evidence of their subversion, Roxas issued a proclamation outlawing the Huck movement on March 6, 1948. It had become an imperative in view of the resurgence of Huck depredations, following the unseating of the seven communists, led by Huck Supremo Luis Tarek through acts of terrorism. Foreign policy Treaty of General Relations On August 5, 1946, the Congress of the Philippines ratified the Treaty of General Relations that had been entered into by and between the Republic of the Philippines and the United States on July 4, 1946. Aside from withdrawing her sovereignty from the Philippines and recognizing her independence, the treaty reserved for the United States some basis for the mutual protection of both countries, consented that the United States represent the Philippines in countries where the latter had not yet established diplomatic representation, made the Philippines assume all debts and obligations of the former government in the Philippines, and provided for the settlement of property rights of the citizens of both countries. United States military bases Although Roxas was successful in getting rehabilitation funds from the United States after independence, he was forced to concede military bases, 23 of which were leased for 99 years, trade restriction for the Philippine citizens, and special privileges for U.S. property owner and investor. Parity Rights Amendment on March 11, 1947, Philippine voters, agreeing with Roxas, ratified in a nationwide plebiscite the Parity Amendment to the 1935 Constitution of the Philippines, granting United States citizens the right to dispose of and utilize Philippine natural resources, or parity rights. Turtle and Mangsi Islands on 19 September 1946 the Republic of the Philippines notified the United Kingdom that it wished to take over the administration of the Turtle Islands and the Mangas Islands. Pursuant to a supplemental international agreement, the transfer of administration became effective on 16 October 1947. Assassination attempt the night before the plebiscite, Roxas narrowly escaped assassination by Julio Guillén, a disgruntled barber from Tondo, Manila, who hurled a grenade at the platform on Plaza Miranda immediately after Roxas had addressed a rally. Controversies his administration was marred by graft and corruption, moreover, the abuses of the provincial military police contributed to the rise of the left-wing, Huck movement in the countryside. His heavy-handed attempts to crush the Hucks led to widespread peasant disaffection. 
The good record of Roxas' administration was marred by two failures, the failure to curb graft and corruption in the government, as evidenced by the surplus war property scandal, the Chinese immigration scandal and the school supplies scandal, and the failure to check and stop the communist Hukbalahap movement. Death Roxas did not finish his full four-year term. On the morning of April 15, 1948 Roxas delivered a speech before the United States 13th Air Force. After the speech, he felt dizzy and was brought to the residence of Major General E. L. Eubank at Clark Field, Pampanga. He died later that night of a heart attack. Roxas' term as president is thus the third shortest, lasting one year, ten months, and eighteen days. On April 17, 1948, two days after Roxas' death, Vice President Elpidio Quirino took the oath of office as President of the Philippines. Legacy In his honor Roxas, Oriental Mindoro, the first town to be named as such, Roxas City, Capiz, President Roxas, Capiz, President Roxas, Cotabato, and Roxas, Isabella were named after him. Dewey Boulevard in the city of Manila was renamed in his memory, and he is currently depicted on the 100 Philippine Peso Bill. Ancestry References Bibliography Zaid, Gregorio F. 1984. Philippine History and Government. National Bookstore Printing Press. Zaid, Gregorio, 1956. Philippine Political and Cultural History, The Philippines Since British Invasion, 1957 Revised ed. Manila, Philippines, McCullough Printing Company. External links The Philippine Presidency Project A Country Study, Philippines Manuel A. Roxas Elementary School